the Falkirk wheel is unique. As the major element in the Millennium Link project, its dramatic eye-catching design and unconventional boat trips for the public have turned it into a major tourist attraction for Scotland. Three locks and the wheel itself connect the Lower Forth and Clyde Canal to the Upper Union Canal, with a series of hydraulic motors taking just five minutes to raise or lower 500 tonnes of boats and water at any one time. Two specially built boats, each with a 100 seat capacity, carry passengers on trips from the visitor centre, up through the lift and along an upper aqueduct, before passing through a new tunnel beneath the remains of the Roman Antonine Wall. The lift is computer controlled in all stages of its operation, with dozens of cameras and sensors monitoring boat movements, hydraulic pressures and water levels. The contemporary design of the wheel is complemented by that of the ultra-modern visitor centre, which houses an exhibition complete with a working model of the wheel, a shop and a restaurant. The latest technology is not confined to the wheel, so for safety's sake boats too feature the very latest in marine equipment. To use the lift, boats have to enter into a water tank, or gondola as it's known, before being sealed in for the passage upwards. Special sideways thrusting engines enable boats to manoeuvre more easily into the gondolas. Once inside, each end is sealed to make it self-contained before the wheel starts to turn. Once all safety procedures have been checked and the wheel has been put into motion, it is usually seen rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, but in actual fact it can be made to turn either way. For the purpose of this film, a half revolution of the wheel is better seen when speeded up, in this case by seven times. Machinery of an unprecedented design is contained within the lift's main tower, and this ensures that the gondolas are always horizontal. Archimedes' principle guarantees that as a boat enters a gondola, it displaces exactly its own weight in water. So regardless of whether the two gondolas are empty or full of boats, they will each be carrying the same load. It is estimated that because the weight of the two gondolas is so finely balanced, it takes only one and a half kilowatts of electricity, less than is needed to boil a kettle of water, to complete half a turn of the wheel. The widest part of the wheel structure contains the machinery which drives the lift. After entering a small door, near vertical steps have to be climbed to reach the different levels inside. The wheel was built by Butterley Engineering at Derby, where major parts were painstakingly assembled to ensure a perfect fit. These were then taken to pieces again for transport to Scotland. The meticulous attention to detail paid off when the wheel was put together again at Falkirk, taking a day less than was anticipated. To give extra strength, all steel sections were bolted together as opposed to being welded. Only proven, fail-safe engineering has been used in the wheel's construction. Steps inside the ring of ten hydraulic motors provide access to the wheel's axle, which can be walked through, and from the far end one can see the flat-topped building which houses the computers for operating the wheel. Bogey wheels are fixed beneath each end of the gondolas and these run around a single curved rail around the inside rim of each main arm. 
The gondolas are thus kept permanently horizontal. The sun doesn't always shine in Scotland, but the Falkirk wheel keeps turning. A boat moves along the aqueduct towards the top gondola, where it will tie up. Unfortunately, the crew doesn't have much in the way of protection against the northern elements. The gondola gate rises up first, followed by that of the aqueduct. The gap between them has the water pumped out, and the seal between them is then removed. The gap can now be seen, showing the gondola completely separated from the aqueduct. The journey down begins. A member of the British Waterways staff must accompany any boat making a journey through the lift, and they are in constant radio touch with operators in the control tower. The cycle continues. One gondola goes down and another arrives at the top this time with two boats inside. After the seals between the gondola and the aqueduct have been put into place and the gates lowered, the boats can proceed towards the tunnel. After seeing boats move upwards through the lift, the narrow boat Hedvig I, making a downward trip on a fine day, gives us a chance to see the locks at the end of the Union Canal. Electrically operated paddles had to be installed at this double staircase lock after vandals opened the original manually operated gates, almost emptying the whole of the Union Canal, through the tunnel, past the wheel and onto the town below. The incident occurred just prior to the Queen's visit to open the wheel in May 2002 and for security reasons she was advised not to make the trip which the public enjoys. Before Hedwig I can enter the tunnel, it will have to wait for one of the passenger carrying trip boats to come through, manoeuvre and start its journey back, before following on behind. All over Britain, canals, roads and railways can very often pass over each other at a single location. This site in Scotland is no exception. Above the tunnel runs the Glasgow to Edinburgh railway line, while above that again is a local road, except in this case it doesn't stop there. Once boats have passed through the tunnel and descended the lift to the Forth and Clyde, another aqueduct takes them over the local Falkirk railway line. The days when horses once pulled barges between Scotland's two major cities have long since gone. Sharing the towpaths now are walkers, cyclists and fishermen, who today experience the peaceful ambience that the countryside has to offer, while beneath those same paths now stretches a network of fibre optic communication cables. Let's watch now as two other boats make the downward journey through the lift. One, a standard British waterways vessel, the other, a privately owned and highly decorated craft. On this occasion, with the film again speeded up, it is possible to see the interaction between the huge gears that drive the wheel. 
Here at Falkirk, forward-thinking planners, engineers and architects have created an amazing piece of functional sculpture which has acted as a catalyst for recreation and waterside development right across central Scotland, linking Glasgow to Edinburgh and the Forth to the Clyde. Already, developers of flats, offices and pubs have vied with each other for the lucrative waterside sites. Within a few years, this new corridor of opportunity aims to attract £400 million of private investment and create 4,500 new jobs, an excellent return for the original £85 million investment cost. We'll finish now as Hedvig I leaves the lift and drops the final three metres to the Forth and Clyde. Turning right will take it to Grangemouth and the River Forth, while a left turn will point it in the direction of Glasgow and the River Clyde. Let's wish Hedvig bon voyage! <laughs>